Coconut Water 101, an unexpected journey. This story. Ten years ago, during a casual outing to a New York City bar, childhood friends Ira Liran and Mike Kerbin met two young women from Brazil. When asked what they missed most about their country, the ladies said Agua de Coco, which they called the most nutritious and delicious drink in the world. Intrigued by the idea of their coconuts, the fruit that is, Mike and Ira did some research and learned that the hype was real. Two months later, the guys hopped on a plane to Brazil with a plan to bring coconut water to the U.S. Vita Coco was born. But before we go too far, you should probably learn what we're made of. The goods. This is a young coconut, not to be confused with this hairier, older coconut. While older, more mature coconuts are used to produce the fat-filled coconut milk that tastes delicious in a pina colada and almond joy, consuming both of which in excess may end in tears, young coconuts contain more of the clear, fat-free liquid we call coconut water. What's so great about coconut water? For starters, it's naturally rich in important minerals, vitamins, and electrolytes. It's also low in calories, cholesterol-free, and tastes great. So where do we find our coconuts? They grow here, in coconut trees, which grow here, in coconut groves, which grow in places like here, 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 and here. The life of a coconut doesn't seem too shabby right now, does it? For six to eight months, palm trees soak up soil and sun to fill their coconuts with a perfect mix of naturally filtered water, vital nutrients, just a hint of sweetness, and a healthy dose of Mother Nature's love. For thousands of years, people in tropical regions have cracked open coconuts to sip the refreshing water inside. But thanks to pioneers like Mike and Ira, and those lovely Brazilian girls, you no longer need to keep a machete and ladder on hand to enjoy it yourself, because coconut water has gone global. The process. After being hand-plucked from the tree, a fresh young coconut only lasts for about 10 days, after which it turns into a pumpkin. Joking aside, it's because of this small window of opportunity that most coconut water manufacturers use one of three methods to make the stuff shelf-stable. Not from concentrate. That's what we do here at Vita Coco. From concentrate. And canning. The not from concentrate approach involves picking, cracking, and packing the coconuts directly at the source. After the coconuts are plucked from the trees, they're washed, cracked open, and flash pasteurized for three to four seconds which helps sterilize the coconut water while keeping its delicate flavors and nutrients intact. For our flavored varieties, we use only all-natural fruit purees, making sure that nothing but the purest ingredients go into the pack. From here, the coconut water is poured into eco-friendly Tetra packs, which allow the product to be shelf-stable without refrigeration. The entire process, from tree to pack, never exceeds 72 hours. To put that in perspective, I've been on benders that lasted longer. Once filled, packs are boxed up and shipped to stores around the world. In fact, we hear the end result is a lot like sticking a straw in a coconut. Granted, our source was a talking monkey, but who's asking? Similar to our not-from-concentrate approach, the from-concentrate method starts with cracking open a coconut and flash pasteurizing the water inside. Then things get a little hairy. The coconut water is put into a giant evaporator. Think a big pot on an even bigger stove. And heated for hours until 93% of the water is gone. What does that leave in the pot? A thick coconut water concentrate that closely resembles yellow gravy. From here, the coconut gravy is frozen and put in storage for up to six months. Eventually, the concentrate is thawed, mixed with water, and in some cases, fruit flavoring, pasteurized once again, and bottled. What's the total effect of all this heating, cooling, pasteurizing, and mixing? We can't say for sure, but we think frozen reheated coconut gravy speaks for itself. As with the other two approaches, canning starts with harvesting the coconuts and extracting the water. But that's where the similarities end. Sugar and sometimes fruit flavoring are added to make up for all the coconutty goodness that's about to be boiled away, followed by preservatives like sodium metabisulfite. Yum. Next, the resulting liquid is heated to pasteurization temperature, a steamy 170 degrees. This sweetened, preserved, super hot coconut mixture is poured into cans, which are sealed and placed into a pressure cooker. Because they were prepared in the open air, the coconut mix has to be cooked a second time to kill off bacteria introduced along the way. Then the long, slow cooling process begins. Finally, the can is packaged and shipped. No one knows exactly how prolonged heating, sweetening, preservative spiking, pressure cooking, and cooling affect coconut water. Ignore the fact that these sound like medieval torture techniques, but anyone who sipped coconut water in a can and not from concentrate coconut water in a Tetra Pak will say they're different. In case I lost you, let's do a quick recap. 
Never from concentrate and the Vita Coco way equals three simple steps. From concentrate equals a bunch of not so simple steps. Canning equals too many scary sounding steps. So there you have it, Coconut Water 101. The results. It turns out Mike and Ira were onto something, besides the Brazilian girls. In 2009, six years after Vita Coco hit the scene in Brooklyn, it became the coconut water category leader with a 60% market share. Think the apple of the coconut water category, but our CEO wears flip-flops instead of a black turtleneck. In 2010, big names like Madonna, Matthew McConaughey, Demi Moore, and Anthony Kiedis made investments in the brand. What was the initial result of all this high-profile attention, besides Like a Virgin being thrown around as a possible flavor name? It put Vita Coco on the map, allowing the brand to get space on the shelves of major retail channels previously monopolized by beverage bigwigs. In 2011, tropical singing sensation Rihanna became the face of Vita Coco, catapulting the brand to a new level of stardom and causing all Vita Coco employees to perpetually have Under My Umbrella, Ella, Ella stuck in their heads. Today, Vita Coco is available in more than 75,000 stores in 13 countries around the world and enjoyed by people from all walks of life. So, if you're any sort of active, from pro football to yoga to extreme chess, Vita Coco is a great way to stay hydrated and help prevent cramping. If you're a college student recovering from a hard night of studying, drinking a Vita Coco before bed equals a more manageable morning. Electrolytes are a hangover's worst enemy, in case you didn't know. And if you're from the tropics, it's a little taste of home. We can't be sure, but we suspect our success has something to do with how hard we work to keep our coconut water just the way Mother Nature intended. Natural. It's a pain in the ass, but totally worth it. P.S. Ira married that nice Brazilian girl from the bar. The end.